you're thinking of buying the iPhone 13, then this is the video for you. With improved cameras, brighter display, smaller notch, A15 processor, bigger battery, and more. Hi everyone, I'm Dion Schiddeboom, and in this review, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know. And finally, answering that crucial question of whether it is worth upgrading to the iPhone 13. Let's dive in. Big thank you to Anchor for sponsoring a portion of this video. All right, so to start, let's take a closer look at the design of the iPhone 13. Now, as you can see, we have this very sharp and angular design that we've also come to see in the previous generation iPhone 12. Now, this may be subjective, but I've always preferred this more industrial design with these sharper corners over the more rounded edges that we've come to see for so many generations. The iPhone 13 has this matte aluminum frame and glossy glass on the back. Although not as premium as the stainless steel found on the iPhone 13 Pros, I actually prefer the more matte frame found on the iPhone 13. In my opinion, this looks better and actually feels nicer in the hand. Compared to the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13 is ever so slightly thicker and a bit heavier, and this is to allow for a bigger battery inside. But I'll get into battery life later in the video. The design feels solid in the hand, and it is clearly well built and put together. It can also last up to 30 minutes submerged in up to 6 meters of water. Now I personally still wouldn't go swimming with it, but I am reassured enough to comfortably use the phone in the rain. Along with the iPhone 13 came a range of new colors, and I chose to go for the midnight, and I must say I love the subtle blue undertones. Indoors it almost looks black, but when you take it outdoors and especially in the sunlight, that blue shines through and in my opinion looks gorgeous. For me, it is refreshing to have a color that stands out from the usual black phone, while still looking sharp and understated. Although, if you do not like seeing fingerprints on your phone, I do suggest going for a lighter color, such as the Starlight, as this will show up far less. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear what is your favorite color of the new iPhone 13. And now onto one of the most important features, and that is the display. The iPhone 13 features an OLED display that has the same thin bezels as seen on the iPhone 13 Pros. With a PPI count of 460, I can tell you that I cannot discern individual pixels, and realistically wouldn't need more than this. Compared to the iPhone 12, the screen is now brighter, going all the way up to 800 nits, and up to 1200 nits with HDR content. For me, I found the screen to be more than bright enough, even in direct sunlight. Colors pop and bring content to life, whether it's videos, games, text, even the weather app looks great. Dynamic range is excellent, especially with HDR content, showing clear contrast between the brighter as well as the darker parts of the screen. And this is in part due to the fact that OLEDs can turn off individual pixels, therefore showing true blacks, allowing for a more immersive experience. For me, and I think for most, the 6.1 inch screen size on the iPhone 13 is perfect. But if you do want a smaller display, the iPhone 13 mini has a smaller screen and importantly, this year it retains all of the new features of its bigger brother. On its own, the display on the iPhone 13 is great and I have no complaints. If you do want an even better display with 120 Hz, you will have to go for the iPhone 13 Pro. Now from having used a 120Hz display on an iPad Pro, I can say this makes a difference, providing an even smoother experience when scrolling through text or with any motion on the screen. That said, I can't say that it is worth the increase in price going from the 13 to the 13 Pro. This year, they made the notch 20% smaller, without sacrificing any of its functionality. I say, the smaller the notch, the better. Face ID is great. While I do wish it worked in more distances as well as orientations, it remains to be very fast, reliable, and safe to use every day. Let's talk cameras. The iPhone 13 improves both on camera features as well as camera quality. First, let's talk camera quality. On the back, we have this new dual lens camera system with now larger sensors, which lets more light get in. Both are 12 megapixels. We have a wide angle f1.6 lens as well as an ultra wide f2.4 lens. The 3x telephoto lens is only found on the iPhone 13 Pros. In terms of video, you can record in 4K at up to 60 frames per second, meaning you can record in the highest common quality video standard, making it more than good enough to, for example, start out with on YouTube. And what is particularly exciting is that now the primary wide angle lens 
features what is called sensor shift technology. Now previously this was only seen on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and is now also featured in the iPhone 13. And what this gives you is almost gimbal level of stability in your video. And this is actually why the camera system is now arranged diagonally. Even in more difficult lighting, colors are vibrant without overdoing it. Skin tones are true to life and the dynamic range is in fact even better than the camera I'm using to record this video with right now. And now onto the second improvement, camera features. New is photographic styles, and this essentially lets you change the way your camera takes photos. Not just applying a filter, but actually changing how your camera interprets the scene. Kind of like changing a picture profile on a DSLR. For example, I particularly like this rich contrast picture style. This makes the shadows more dark and the highlights more bright. Photographic styles are useful if you're going for a particular look that you want applied to all of your photos. The next new feature is cinematic mode. This is a new mode in the camera app and is essentially portrait mode, but for video, creating that shallow depth of field look live as you are filming. What this does is it automatically adjusts the focus based on the position of faces in the frame. Once you're done filming, you can adjust the level of depth after the fact and even change where the video focuses. This all sounds really impressive and it is, but it is not perfect. For example, it does struggle around hair and focus can be a bit flaky in darker scenarios. Personally, I was hoping to get more manual control, especially in a feature called cinematic mode. That said, this is a cool feature and I think will be useful for some and could improve in the future with software updates. Also with the iPhone 13 in iOS 15, you get neat new camera features, such as the ability to copy and paste text directly from an image. This is particularly useful if say you're in class and wanna take notes of a PowerPoint presentation or the whiteboard. Simply put, these cameras provide truly beautiful photos and videos, but using these cameras does require a significant amount of power. So how does the iPhone 13 hold up in terms of battery life? To me, one of the most important features of any phone is the battery. And I'm pleased to say that the iPhone 13 features a bigger battery and allows for truly excellent battery life, providing a significant upgrade over last year's iPhone 12. As a power user in testing, I found myself getting a full day's worth of battery life and with lighter use getting anywhere from one and a half days all the way up to nearly two full days of battery life with around six to eight hours of screen on time. And this is something I could definitely not do on my previous iPhone 11 or 10. Don't get me wrong, if you're gonna be filming in 4K for multiple hours, you will run out of battery more quickly. But for day-to-day -day use, the iPhone 13 has exceeded my expectations. Just like last year, there is no charger included in the box of the iPhone. And if you don't have one already, I greatly recommend the Anchor Nano Pro. Big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this portion of the video. This is the Nano Pro, a fast USB-C charger. I have the UK version here, but the Nano Pro is also available in the US as well as other regions and comes in four colors. Here I have the Arctic White and the Glacier Blue versions, and I must say the Arctic White in particular looks very clean. My current setup is I have one charger stationed by my bedside and one in the office. That way I can always quickly top up if needed. The Nano Pros use USB-C, and this means they'll work with the cable that comes with your iPhone. And they support a powerful 20 watt charge capacity, all while still being 50% smaller than the standard 20 watt iPhone charger, taking up less space on your wall and making it easy to travel with and take with you on the go. The Nano Pros also have upgraded temperature sensors and uses intelligent software while charging. This is to make the charging process safer to protect your phone, letting you charge it fast and make it last. For example, it can charge an iPhone 12 from 0% all the way up to 50% in just 26 minutes. And this makes it up to three times faster than the original five watt charger. Many thanks to Anchor, back to the iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 features Apple's newest A15 processor, providing faster GPU as well as CPU performance. 
And without going too far into the technical details, what is most important is that it provides an incredibly smooth experience running iOS 15 and virtually never lags. When switching between apps, running graphic intense games, editing raw photos in Lightroom, in testing, I feel that nothing so far has been able to really push the phone to its limits. And this is all great, but where you'll benefit the most from this increase in performance is in the years down the road, as the phone ages. In recent years, Apple has only been extending its software support for their phones, so I would expect anywhere from 5 to 7 years of software support. I'm also really pleased to say that all iPhone 13 models now start with 128 gigabytes of storage, double the previous 64 gigabytes of storage. Okay, so now that we've covered everything about the iPhone, let's talk about whether it's worth upgrading. So right off the bat, if you are coming from an iPhone 12, then the iPhone 13 is not a reasonable upgrade. On the other hand, if you're coming from the iPhone 11, it may be. While I do think the iPhone 11 is still very capable and can easily last a few more years, if you do want that newer design as well as an OLED display and better cameras and battery, then the iPhone 12 may be a worthy upgrade. And if you're coming from an iPhone XR or an iPhone X, then yes, the iPhone 13 is a huge upgrade. And if you're coming from an iPhone 7 or 8, then believe me, this will be an entirely new experience. With all of that in mind, Apple still sells the iPhone 12, and actually currently sells it for $100 less than the iPhone 13. So should you buy that? In my opinion, no. If you're picking between these two models, I would definitely go for the iPhone 13. Not only do you get double the base storage, you get better cameras, a faster processor, and a bigger battery, which in my opinion makes it more than worth the small price difference. As for whether you should go for the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 13 Pro, I would only go up to the Pro if you need that high refresh 120Hz display, even better camera system, or you simply want the bigger screen of the Pro Max. Otherwise, for most people, including myself, I would recommend the iPhone 13 as it has the most important new features and comes in at a better value. So. To recap, the iPhone 13 with its improved camera system, brighter display, smaller notch, A15 processor and bigger battery provides solid improvements to what matters most in a smartphone and will last for many years to come. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, be sure to leave them down below and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.